I came home early just for this pod, Jimmy. That's why you I lost. You want to stay? Did you see Perry? Did uh, you no. pass each other at the airport? No. Because he told me he was landing when you told me you were leaving. Really? Yeah. No. I figured, I figured as such. Yeah. All right. You ready? How was your weekend? Or how's your week been? It was good. The weekend. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Are we so still much, running? So Songs? much going Is on. The song still going? Yeah. Oh, we're going long. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Hey, we have a well, we can once the song ends. Go. Did it end? It ended. We need to give a birth. We have some two birthday shout outs this week. Who is it? Who are they? One, the one and only Borsky Nation. Live Borsky. Borsky Nation, rise up. 20, 25. 25 years old. She can rent cars now. She can rent cars. She doesn't have to ride in the back of the one car they rent for all the PPA employees. Yeah. So happy birthday, Liv. And a former guest. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh. And a former guest. All right. One of our favorite guests. Who is that? One of our only guests. Okay. Lucy Kovalova. She's in the Discord and she's she, been popping off lately. She's popping off. Yeah. Happy birthday, Lucy. She's and also Papa Tom as well. Yes. And Lucy's also 25 today. I'm she sure. is 25, yeah. And Papa Tom. Tom Westrup. The OG. Lots of birthdays. Happy birthday, everyone. Happy birthday. Thank you for sharing your birthdays is with Papa us. Is Papa Tom our original, like, number one fan? I think he is. He might be, huh? Yeah, he's great. Yeah. We love him. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to a bonus episode uh, We are going to of King of the Court. We are going to recap. So we had uh, the draft happen this last week. Yeah, Major MLP. League Pickle. Yeah, Major Finally. League Pickleball. Finally. After months and months and months of nonsense we had a draft yeah did you think this day would come no i wasn't sure i mean there was times where i thought mlp had died there was times i thought that they would have a draft but it wasn't going to be a good draft they were yeah so we are what are we we're in april yeah and i think they slated this or they wanted this to happen at the beginning of the year maybe january february mm. or a couple couple months delay well, but here I, we are ideally i think they wanted to do it during the december bubbly event in vegas yeah and then that event got canceled, and then yeah. everything, anyways, it happened. Okay, all right, we're going to get into that in this show. But first and foremost, we'd like to big, give a big shout out to our title sponsor, The Pickler. They make this show happen. They are the leading indoor facilities all across the world. Go check them out. If yeah. you're wanting to start your own business, be involved in pickleball, uh, The Pickler is the best company to partner with check them out for franchising and if you are looking if you need a facility in your area actually there's a couple of facilities opening in indianapolis indianapolis and, and texas i think yeah. are the next few and indy he reached out to me awesome are we and going out there i think we are <laughs> and i connected him with you are not going out no there. i did he, i'll put this out there right now jimmy he, will not be out there no, listen he we had a long talk okay <laughs> and they have a they how have, many times did you say you're going out to chicago I know, but then I the dates didn't match up. I'm sorry. <laughs> but listen, Indy, just talking about Indy really quick, they're going to have multiple, but their first one they're opening is, an, is obviously a nice one. But then they're having like a mega pickler mm -hmm. that they're opening. Love it. And that one's supposed to be huge, and Drew Brees is coming out to that one. And and I connected them with the Kawamotos mm -hmm. because, I mean, they live in Indy. You might, might as well get the two best pros in your area, right? Yep. And so, yeah, I mean, they're opening everywhere. Yeah. So, so go check them out, The Pickler, and if you actually are serious about uh, starting your own business or partnering with them, mention, let them know that the the boys at KOTC sent yeah. you. Then also, big shout out to our next sponsor, Pickleball Central. They are the number one online retailer. They ship everywhere, and their return policy is incredible. Use code KOTC. You can use it on almost any item, and it will give you the best Discount. We code have confirmed this. We have the best discount, the highest, the best discount on Pickleball Central. So code KOTC, check it out. Um, yeah, anything you want. I mean, that that place almost is, anything you want. Yeah, almost anything. But I'm just saying, anything Pickleball related, they have it. Even if you don't use our code, you can still purchase. Yeah, but use our code, obviously. All right. So, okay. Moving on. Okay. MLP draft. So that was Tuesday. Yeah, and this was a little bit in line with the PPA tournament. So the PPA tournament started on Monday. They had the yep. qualifiers on Monday. Yep. And then Tuesday, they had the round of 64. And so a lot of these players, they were there playing 
yeah. uh, when this draft was going on. It was yeah. in the back of their heads. Um, yeah, walk us through. So Tuesday was the premiere draft, and then yeah. the following day, Wednesday, was, was the challenger. challenger. So we're going to start with premiere. So the premiere draft was an auction format. How was the production, first and foremost? I mean, I think it was good considering it felt like they kind of had to put it together at the end. There were a few things that I will definitely, like, for example, they cut it off in the middle of, on the 19th pick, literally yep. just cut it off, game over. <laughs> the only way to find out, there's a couple things, okay? So, like, we're in a technology age. Nobody, like, gets on blogs anymore to find mm -hmm. out. Except and for they, our Discord. Yeah, but people are blogging, like, MLP was blogging the picks. Like, why aren't you tweeting them out? Yeah. Right? Why aren't you on, on Twitter or X or whatever and, and sending out the picks that way? Uh, their Instagram page went one through 10 and then jumped all the way to 19. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they just didn't have graphics made. I mean, the whole thing was just, that stuff was just kind of wild to me. I thought the first two hours of the draft, other than taking forever, but that's how these drafts go. If you watch Dave the Fleming NFL was draft, texting everybody, apparently really. Yeah. He was saying I was texting this person, so-and-so, and then he'd give a little background story on it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, it was kind of funny. The discord was making some jokes about that. Yeah. I think that if you are, I mean, that's how these drafts go, right? NFL gets freaking 10 minutes between picks, 15 minutes between picks. So they're long. That's why they only do one round in a day, but it just felt really long. But I did like that Fleming was telling you how much players were going for. Obviously, he was talking about he was mentioning who was bidding mm -hmm. for each slot, so you knew who was going after each slot. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I thought that part of it was good. Yeah. So the abrupt ending was not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we just kind of want to run down through the teams? Yeah. Let's go through it? real quick. I mean, let's go team by team. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. Is so it, coming in at number one was Ben Johns with the Seattle Pioneers. Yeah. And that is Tom Dundon's team. Yeah. So Dundon's team, uh, a little bit interesting. Ben goes for 840,000 draft points. So to let everybody know, each team gets 500,000. Dave Fleming was calling them points, but yeah. it's essentially dollars. dollars yeah. So everyone gets 500,000 of fake dollars, if you want to call it that. Yep. And then you can purchase up to another $500,000, and that actually comes out of the owner's pockets. Yes. And yep. so essentially, Ben Johns went for eight or 360 or so. 340. 340. 340 out of the owner's pocket. Yeah, so everyone knew Ben was going to go number one. I thought he would go high. I thought the cost for Ben would be higher. I'm a little bit surprised it wasn't driven up a little bit higher by some of the other owners, I think that I would have probably played a little poker on that and driven it all the way up to 970. And had I not gotten Ben for 970, then, you know, or 960, whatever it is, then I, then I don't get them. Mm -hmm. But if I end up, if somebody ends up matching me dollar for dollar, then you end up with Ben Johns, mm -hmm. right? Like I think you win either way. So I'm actually shocked that they let Dundon leave a hundred and, 40 on the table. Yeah. Ironically enough, he didn't spend it. Mm -hmm. He, I was, I heard that he told Ben that that's it. We're mm -hmm. out of money. We spent it all on you. Yeah. And so Ben had, that's why Ben had to wait. So Ben goes one and then the rest of their team, essentially he waits till the very end and he goes and gets coop, mm -hmm. which shockingly, I think she fell a little bit, but I thought she'd probably be around a fourth round pick mm -hmm. Jesse. And then the second to last pick of the draft, mm -hmm. he saves his brother from challenger fate and goes and gets Colin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it ended up being a good team. Now I think in, in dream breakers, mm -hmm. Ben and Colin are solid. I mean, coop has shown that she can get points when she needs it. Hey, you only need to play a couple points yeah. at a time. So yeah, anything coop can was happen. obviously on your team last year. Yeah. Ben and Jesse won it last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think the strategy here is that they're going to win all their men's matches and they're going to win every match with Ben and, I would assume Ben's going to play with Jesse. Yeah, he played with her last yeah. season. So I assume they feel like they're going to win that. You're probably going to lose your mixed matches. But he Coop. has also played with Coop. He was actually on Coop's fir very first, first BLQ yeah, team. Yeah, BLQK team. Yeah, with Irina and Nunnery. Yep. Yeah. Rest in peace to the freestyle, boys. Exactly. Um, so I don't know. I think it's a good team. I think that that team, any team that has Ben Johns has got to be considered you know, at the top. Mm-hmm. And you have three veterans of the sport, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they'll, they'll figure it out. I think they'll get it done. I would say that Ben's probably going to go undefeated in men's. And there's a good chance that 
Th- so this will kind of test my theory about them um, playing rally. rally scoring. Yeah. 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 The, Although the he only, has been losing lately. The only thing that I'll say is there's no freeze in this one, and it's to 25. 25, and no so freeze. So it's a little bit different than previous ones, but... Yeah, I don't um, think we're going to see the close matches as close to the matches and the comebacks that we are, we're used to seeing in MLP. Do you like that, the no freeze? Um, I think that the no freeze is probably going to give us cl- closer to rally scoring. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't think I like it. I think the freeze is what makes it exciting. Yeah, I like the first freeze where it was, what, to 21 and you froze at night 18? 18, yeah. What was the second one? Wasn't it froze second freeze one at was 20? 20. Yeah. yeah. I like the first one. Yep, exactly. So Okay, so Ben goes number one for yeah. 840. And yep. then number two is Annalie Waters. So then Annalie goes too. So now the the talks, the Annalie thing's funny to me. So, by the way, I'm gonna let's grade them. I'm gonna say I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give Seattle anytime you get Ben Johns. I'm gonna give him a B plus. Okay. Okay. Seattle is a B plus. Yep. The only reason it's not higher is because they had a hundred. They left one hundred and forty thousand dollars on the table. Okay. So Are the you clown- copying Jim Claus with his grades. Dude, that guy. Talk about the worst. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> okay. So second, we got the clowns. So here's some little inside info. Okay. I was told that Annalie refused to talk to anybody before the draft, but Ryan Harwood. She was planning to, like, she, I, this is my own personal opinion. This is not fact. Let me just be very clear because people love to hold me to this. Okay. I think she said she was only playing four events and she told everyone she's only playing four events Mm -hmm. to make sure that she ended up on New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And she told New Jersey that she would play all the events Mm -hmm. because her mom's a coach. She has a great relationship. Is she, is she officially the coach? Yeah, she's been their coach. She's still their coach. No, but of the fives. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. She's their coach. She's played on that team before. Okay. Conspiracy theory. I like it. And obviously she likes Harwood. Gary Vee has a lot of money. And maybe she thinks she looks good in that clown outfit. I don't know. But they did change her logo. How is it? It's worse. It literally, I didn't think it could get worse, and it got worse. Gotcha. It's creepy. But Annalie, too. So I didn't think Annalie was going to go number two. For a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason I didn't think she would go to was that she's only playing four events. But of course, she told the five she would play more, mm-hmm. and so they end up going and taking her at two. Okay. So oh, what, do you know what she went for? She went for six hundred eighty thousand. Okay. Um, and then their number two pick on the team was Zane Nevertill. Yeah, so they don't pick till twenty picks later, mm-hmm. and they go and get Zane. Who Zane's a, Zane is an MLP guy. Mm-hmm. Like he does very well in MLP, so I don't hate that pick. That's about where I thought Zane would go. Except for on the pandas. Yeah, when he's on the pandas, he was rough. But I, that's where I thought Zane would go. But then it gets really interesting. Mm-hmm. Then they reach for back-to-back picks. Not reach, but they go for upside picks. They get mm-hmm. Mari Humberg, and they get Will House. Now, here's a fun fact, Tyler. Okay. You only get to keep three players. You get to keep two for three years and one for two years. And then the fourth player on your team gets thrown back into the draft. Gotcha. So I didn't think there was a draft moving forward. Maybe into the waiver pool. Gotcha. So it's a little bit calculated here. So if Mari struggles, Mm -hmm. then you obviously, or will, and they show that they're not ready, then you can throw them back in. Yeah, yeah. If they end up being the stars that you think they can be, then Zane is obviously probably the odd man out. Do you have to put somebody? Yeah, you you only get to to keep three. Oh, really? Yep, you only keep three. Gotcha. And at the end of the season, you relegate. So obviously, Annalie will be one that they keep for three years. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to be a fight. Interesting. Between the I other three. I did not know that. Yeah. So I would say that, um, yeah, they reached a little. I mean, if, if Mari's good, you know, I mean, she played Premier last year. She got called up for, when? I can't remember what team. What team? Okay. She played in maybe event. like a sub, right? Yeah, as yeah. a sub, she got called up. Gotcha. Yeah. And then Will House. So Will House, we tried to pick up Will House mm-hmm. on the Black Bears last year before the finals, and he had work. Uh huh. But I mean, he's medaled in five APP events this year. With who? Well, with lots of different partners, but with the SQ, with I think he's played with J Dub, lots of singles. Okay. So he he is a guy that's up and coming, but he's never played a PPA. And I don't think he's ever played this level of talent. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting how he does. But in the fourth round, that's not a bad pick. Gotcha. So I would give that team, because it's all pure potential on that team, 
I think they're like a C right now. Man, you're tough. All right, next we have St. Louis Shock. Yep, the Shock. So the Shock took Dias or no, sorry, Anna Bright. Anna Bright, number three. So I was in love with the Shock's draft until the very end. So Anna Bright goes three. Um, again, she's got to carry. If you're going to be the number three pick, she's got to be able to carry. Unfortunately, she in the PPA this weekend, she struggled a little bit. We'll talk mm-hmm. about that later. But you got to be able to carry. So she's obviously has huge success in MLP, right? She's a yep. great player. I think she's fought her way to being neck and neck with Catherine mm-hmm. as the number two. Then they turn around and they go, oh, and I think Anna went for five. She went for 590. Okay. So that leaves you 410 left. So then they go and they get Hayden, who I think is a great pick. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a, again, if you get these That players, was second round, late, se- late second late round. Late second. Yep. Yeah, and then they turn around right after Hayden, three picks later, and they land Tardio. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have two of the two 18-year-old up-and-comers. Anna's what, 23? I think she's older. Is she? Okay. Yeah, 24, 25. I mean, you get – so she's that much older than James? How old is James? I thought James was like 22, 23. Maybe not. He's got to be at least 23. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Around Anyways, there. they're young still. Yeah. So you have those guys who – and they're – Red hot, right? They've both been playing really well. And then for the fourth round, she tries to catch that lightning in the bottle again, mm-hmm. what she did with Rohrbacher, mm-hmm. and she gets Kate Fahey. Mm-hmm. Kate, we had her on our board for Challenger. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't say where, but I do th- I do think that the Night Owls would have taken her first round in Challenger. Mm-hmm. Caitlin knows her well, and she... she um, Plays in New York, she's, you know, New Jersey. Yep. Two-time Big Ten Tennis Player of the Year. I mean, her her pedigree is very similar to Rachel's. Mm-hmm. So I think Anna's trying to capture that. The difference is, is I'm not sure Kate has the results or has... There's not... A, how, do you know how long she's been playing? She's Kate? been playing for a while, a couple of years. Okay. But it's, it's just a... I mean, it's a huge reach at this point, right? Okay. So I really like their team. I just feel like Kate is such an unknown. Again, she's never played PPA. Mm-hmm. Right, so what? How, I think she has recently. So how? But how does she do? I mean, what do you? Uh, somebody um, posted like some of her wins and losses, and I think she's played with John Sincola recently. Yeah, she played with Sincola, but I thought that was an APP. No, it was a PPA. That's let's pretty look. sure it was Austin PPA. So she's twenty seven. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, she did play Austin. So they lost to Jackie. She played with Carolina Mayorga Perry. Mm-hmm. She lost to Jackie and Lucy five and seven. Okay. And I won't say who told me, but someone told me they thought Carolina played better. Um, they played Camila Garcia Wright and Nicole Eugenio, and they won 11, 9, 11, 7. Her and Sincola lost to Vivian and Thomas, 12, 10, 11, 4. They beat Lindsay Newman and Rafa Hewitt, okay. 11, 8, 11, 8. They beat Mary Brasha and Jaume. Okay. So maybe it's this recency bias. Recency bias matters. Recency bias is massive in MLP. They beat Bryce Larson. Okay. Is that a big win? You tell me. Perry would think so. Um, and then she played in this Montclair pickleball championship. I don't even know. Oh, this is old. Never mind. This, All right. She played three five in that. Okay, so Anna's going to be with her. Um, they're going to be playing together. Yeah. Anna Bright. Do you think she replaces Rohrbacher? No, she's not going to be as good as Rachel. Um, I think that she... Oh, she played APP Houston. Lost to Susanna Barr and Megan Fudge. Lost to Jeannie Arakino of Riley Bonner. I mean, she doesn't have... I mean, those wins at Austin are good. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's decent. But I don't think she has the ped- like the pedigree that Rachel does. Mm-hmm. It, it'll really be interesting. But I mean, look, they. I need to clarify on Rachel real quick too, because I talked to Anna. Uh-huh. Anna did have Rachel on her board. Let me be clear. Mm-hmm. She did like Rachel. I'm not saying that she didn't throw. I know so you were wrong. No, it's not that I was wrong. So you were wrong again? No, no, no. no. I wasn't wrong. It sounds like you're. I was a, wrong about the mistake. Name. It was Jilly B's name that she threw out, not Susanna Bars. But she didn't like fight for. Jilly B, she just suggested J- Jilly B. And then when the other owner said, well, who's this Rachel? Anna had knew all about her and actually had her on her board. And then Anna basically said, hey, I know her. 
this is what I know. So I do so think Jimmy is wrong again. I wasn't wrong, but Anna does deserve some credit. For All right, Rachel. what what do you give okay. the the grade the letter? Uh that team's probably like a B minus. Okay, B minus. All right, moving on to Columbus. That is Riley, Riley Newman. Riley goes four okay. sliders. A little bit uh, news update. I'm sure most of you guys are aware, but Riley initially was not going to be playing any of the PPAs. Yeah, but. The day of the MLP draft, he came to terms with PPA Agreement. and said that he was going to play nine PPAs. Yeah, so he's back. So he's back playing tournaments. Nine events. Yep. So instead of a Rolex, he's rocking a G-Shock. Do you know why he made that decision, that change? Uh, I heard that somebody had talked to him and basically just said, dude, you're really going to throw your career away at 30. I heard that he actually did a pickleball clinic with Johnny Pickleball, and he hated it so much that... He didn't want to do any more. Well, I think he still has to do some. Nine, <laughs> nine isn't enough. Yeah, but would you hate, would you hate <laughs> being with Johnny Pickleball for thirteen hours? I'd love it. <laughs> We'd have some great combos. Uh, that might be where you end up when we get to your team. Hey, maybe. <laughs> All right, Riley Newman. So Riley goes number uh, one on their team. Do you know what he went for? Yeah, five ninety. Five ninety. No, five fifty. Five fifty. Okay, and then we got Megan Dizon. So I think that's a great pick. I mean, Megan at eighteen. I think Megan is a top seven female right now okay um i would put her around that at a range i mean they're playing really well now mm -hmm. megan the only thing with megan is megan has never had to be the alpha on any team she's been on and rally scoring is massive yeah you have to put take that into but account having jason peary on our show recently mm -hmm. and him speaking about megan megan's trying to become she is focusing on her dinking mm -hmm. And like that's a big, big emphasis on her game, and I think that will help her, mm -hmm. you know, stay in games and rally scoring. So Meg, I mean, like I said, she's played with Etta at MLP. She did play with Maggie, but then Maggie kind of got hurt, and they didn't have, or I mean, when she got sick, mm -hmm. didn't have great success, and they slid in. Is that Megan Fudge that they slid into that one? Yes. Yep. Megan Fudge. So now Megan is she is the number one female on that team, and she's got to carry. Okay, Connor Garnett, steal. Got Connor Garnett at 31. Do you I, know what he went for? Uh let's see. He went for he went for 140. Okay. I feel like that's a freaking steal. Um getting Connor Garnett that low is mm -hmm. it is a is a great pick. Um and then they rounded it out with somebody who I think has all the potential and she's playing really well coming back from a baby. Brooke Buckner. Yeah. At 45, Brooke Buckner's... I mean, that's a good choice right there. I don't know who else you would have taken in that spot. I think Alex Trung was there. Um, Elise, she, was uh, 40. she went right before that. Yeah, but we can... Let's see what... Yeah. I mean, if you could have added... I think Elise would have been the best option. I mean, Buckner went for 10000 Elise went for 18000 mm -hmm. So it's... But I think they spent their allotment. I think all they had left was ten. Because mm -hmm. if they went 300 on Megan... By the way, you were getting roasted by looking at your phone so much during these these uh, shows. Well, dude, I don't I, I don't have like a big iPad in front of me. <laughs> well, so they only had ten thousand left, so they had to go someone that they could get for ten. Okay, and at least went for eighteen. So yeah, I think that's a I th I think that's a pretty solid team. I think it's a good team too. I'd give that team a B plus. Okay. All right. Next we have Arizona Drive. Andre Diescu. Man, Arizona started off red hot, and I thought that they were massive favorites. Mm -hmm. Diescu at five, Dylan Frazier at 13. I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, these guys are yep. They're going to be tough to beat. They, the, the only thing I was talking with a lot of players this last week, and, and the thing about Dylan and JW is they have not had much success in MLP. They haven't now. They're now, incredible players. They haven't won MLP, but well, not only winning, but we they got haven't little, done well. No, they have. So we this is this is actually the Ranchers. Dylan Dylan's team last season they didn't do well. Okay, well Dylan's team didn't, but this is kind of a a fake. And argument. even when Dylan played with JW, they didn't do well. Like the the second season. But this is kind of a fake argument for JW because we had this talk with Parks. Me and Richie and Tim Parks had this argument about J-Dub and Riley, mm -hmm. and we looked at the numbers, and J-Dub actually had better numbers in MLP than Riley. In terms of what? In like, terms of mixed and wins and everything, yeah. And he played with worse partners. So J-Dub has had success. Dylan, I agree. Mm -hmm. So Dylan, yeah. 
But you have to ask you and Dylan. Like that's a okay. really good yep. team. Moving I think on. They, that's the number two men's team behind Ben and Colin. Mm-hmm. Um, then they go on to pick up Schneeman, Lacey Schneeman. Schneeman's fine at 34, but I still think you have a lease there. You had. He even had Cali there. You had might have had Cali there. Yeah. Right? I mean, you had yeah. Keita Pisnik was there, or at least close. She went right before. But but the thing, and maybe they were bidding before that, but you paid 41000 for for Schneeman. I mean, obviously, that's the biggest drop, by the way. Mm-hmm. So that kind of makes sense that they got her there because it went from 100000 for Mari Humberg all the way down to 41000 for Schneeman, the very next pick. Mm-hmm. And then it shot back up a little bit. But Elise was there for eighteen. Coop was there for eleven. Jesse was there for eleven. Okay. I feel and like, then, what do you think about the last pick, Caitlin Christian? I mean, again, it's a it's a uh, it's a pure upside pick. Like all you're doing is upside. Caitlin Christian has zero zero results in doubles. Mm-hmm. Zero. Nothing. I, there's not one win that Caitlin Christian has. Her singles is quite impressive lately. Singles is good. Yep. The one thing I'll add is Morgan Evans is the coach of yeah. the Arizona Drive, and he actually was the coach of Caitlin Christian when she first came onto the scene maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. And so maybe that connection there. Yeah, and I'm not saying Caitlin's not going to be good, but again, you're swinging for that upside pick. It's the Rora Bacher factor. Mm-hmm. So I love their men. Their women leave a lot. You love of, their men? Yeah, I love their men. Baby Dill. Um, I'm going to clip that. You should clip it. You love their men. But the women leave a lot to be desired. Okay, grade. Um, I like the first two picks, and they got Dylan really, really low. So I'm going to say B, solid B. Okay. All right, real quick, let's take a quick moment to interrupt this show with a sponsor ad for you guys. Uh, our next sponsor is C&D Pickleball Nets. We love them. Jimmy. Did you see that Black Bear's net? Yeah, it's pretty it's cool. Done. It's yeah. done. You can stop talking about it now. No, it's sick. Wait till it's out. Hey, I'm putting a court in my backyard. You saw a bunch yeah. of concrete right now, but I'll be putting a C and D. Are you gonna do net. custom color? Uh, probably not. Why? I like the black. But what color is your court? Uh, TBD. If you have any killer suggestions for court colors, what about that purple you're wearing? Uh, not bad. Do you like it? It's kind of like plum. Plum. Yeah. C and D. They're at APP right now. Yes. Because they're the official net of the APP tour. Yep. I mean, it's just like we've been over this. They a make quality times. nets, heavy duty nets. Uh, buy them for your facilities, your gyms, your churches, you those, your driveways. You see those nets swaying at PPA again? Yeah. Right? It doesn't happen with CND. Doesn't There's happen. all that wind in North Carolina. Those nets start swaying. Yep. Oh, got to get the sandbags out. Yep. So check out CND, the best pickleball nets.com. Use code KOTC. Also, if you're doing a facility, Graham, Travis, I know you don't like me right now, but put C and D in your facility. <laughs> Smartest thing you'll ever do. All okay. right. Moving on. All right. So we just had Arizona Drive. Next up, we got the Hustlers. So this is where Jack Sock went. And you thought that he was going number two? Yeah. All right. So a little bit of a big miss from you. No, I mean, two to six is not. I mean, it's still a pretty good prediction for a guy that's never won anything. Okay. What did he go for? So Sock went for. Uh, he went for five fifty. Okay. So he actually went for more than Dayescu. So kind of went back up. So here's the thing with Sock. I think that Sock had has a ton of marketing value, and that's one of the reasons I thought he would go super high. Mm-hmm. But what came out before the draft was that you have to pay fifty percent of your bid to retain that player for the next year. Mm -hmm. So I think that that, so if you're paying 50%, so you're paying 200 and to the league, to the league. Mm -hmm. So you're paying $260,000, 262,500. How's that math (laughs) to retain sock Mm -hmm. next year? Does that, is that make him not as worth it because Mm -hmm. marketing potential, you're going to be able to recoup that money. Yeah. So I think that's why he fell a little bit because his results aren't quite there, Mm -hmm. but Again, it's a huge upside pick. You, now you're going to pair him. You pair him with Jackie Kawamoto, mm-hmm. who is the reset queen, right? I mean, Jackie defensively is as good as it gets in our game. Mm-hmm. So if she's playing with Sock, I mean, he can just do his thing, right? She mm-hmm. She's the one that best resembles Parento, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So I think that's solid. And then at 28, I actually thought she fell a little bit 
you go get the best female available at 28, which was Leia. Okay. So, I mean, Leia's playing well. Her and Hayden are playing really well and mixed right now. Yeah. So I think that ja and Jackie and Leia is a good, that's probably, in my opinion, right? It's probably, it's, it's, if it's not the best women's team, it's the second best women's team behind Catherine and Jade. Mm -hmm. I think those are the two best women's teams. Okay. And then they go and at 46, right before the end of the draft, there's a lot of guys there. There was Zhao Mei was there. Mm -hmm. There was DJ uh, was there. DJ was there. Eric Lang, AJ Kohler. AJ Kohler, Rafa. Yep, Rafa. Was there. And they go get CJ Klinger. They get the best player and challenger from last season. Mm -hmm. And they give him his chance to play. CJ's length, he's a lefty. Mm -hmm. So he gets, he's going to play the right with Jack. So that gives Jack no argument about right or left. There's no Julian Arnold situation. Mm -hmm. CJ's long, and he is absolutely ferocious when it comes to mixed. Um, and like Leia likes playing the left, mm -hmm. so you can play CJ and Leia. You have freaking insane court coverage. So yeah, I like. I actually like that team. I think again, it all depends on Jack Sock. Yeah, if Jack Sock is, if he doesn't improve, if he struggles, if he and. I think this will be the first time that Jack has done rally scoring. Rally and MLP in yeah. general, right? It's yeah. different. It's a different format. But I think Jack is one of those guys that will be built for MLP. He's got the energy for it. Mm -hmm. He's got the he's he's the team guy. So I like that team. I'd probably rate that team in the B range. And again, it's, what what's the B range? B minus. Let's B, go B, B minus. Yeah, just because the only reason is it's got it depends on Jack. Okay, and it also depends on. I mean, CJ's got to take that step up too, right? I think CJ can, but yeah. Okay, moving on. Texas. So this is funny because this is the team that Jared of the Kitchen uh -huh. rated dead last. Basically said that they're awful, mm -hmm. right? He gave them like an F, D plus, something. Below Utah? Yeah. Well, he didn't even comment on Utah. Okay. So I think you got an incomplete, <laughs> which is worse than an F. You didn't even show up Hey, class. I'll take an incomplete. So the thing with Texas is I like them a lot. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to say this, but Christian, I still think is number two or number three best mixed player in the world. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, James, it was him and James, and James is coming back from injury. Mm -hmm. Ben's one, and then Christian and James are two and three. Etta is, in my opinion, top five female. Mm -hmm. So you have a top five male and top five female on one team. Name another team that has that. Yeah. I think that's the only team that uh, does. Mad, mad drops. Catherine and Thomas? Yep. I mean, you can make that argument. I think Christian's better than Thomas. Okay. Yeah, but I mean. But yeah. I, yeah. And, but they also took those two in the first round, and this is seven and 15. Mm -hmm. So there's value there. Then they turn around and they get Tina Pisnik, who... This is the only question mark in this team is Tina likes the left. Mm -hmm. Etta's, Etta can play both, mm -hmm. but I feel like you want to play Etta on the left because she she's a little bit more, she attacks a little bit more, mm -hmm. but they'll figure that out. But Tina is super steady. She's never played with a partner at his caliber. And I think that she, I think they're going to do really well because Tina's just going to reset. And she's going to let Etta do her thing. And then you pair Christian with another good athlete in Pablo. Yeah. And Christian likes the left. And Christian likes yeah. the left. So now you have a lefty. And the other thing is, is Tina is used to playing. She likes playing with lefties. Mm -hmm. So now you give her Pablo. Yeah. Or Pablo and Etta have played mixed together. Mm -hmm. And they've had success. So I think that team is without like a bona fide superstar, right? It doesn't have like a, it doesn't have an Anna. Uh, Anna Bright doesn't have an Annalie Waters, doesn't have a Ben Johns. Uh -huh. It's the most well constructed team, in okay. my opinion. So Top with the bottom, lot, with a lot of these these picks, I felt like a lot of the teams did really good for one or two or maybe three picks, and then there's one or two that are to me just super random. Or it yeah, every seem team like, has a fatal flaw. Exactly, it doesn't seem like there's chemistry between the players or that the GMs or coaches thought it through. And yeah. so maybe I could be wrong, but it I, seems like almost every single team you're like, Oh, that's a great, great pick. And then all of a sudden, like, why did they do that? I agree. Except for Texas. I think, I don't think, like I said, I don't think Texas Christian isn't there yet. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they have a superstar, but they have four really solid players. Well, Christian would be your superstar. Yeah. But I'm just yeah. saying that like, again, they don't have, yeah, but they have four really good players. Okay, what do you rate? The, well, the question also, can Pablo play with someone besides Fed? 
Exactly. And that's what we'll see. But also somebody mentioned that Pablo and Christian were on the challenger team last season, yeah. or two seasons ago. That won it. Yeah. 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 So a little, yeah. a little, so throwback. they have played together. Yeah. yeah. I think that team is a, honestly, that's an a minus a minus. I think that's wow. one of my top teams. Okay. Moving on. We got DC, DC, um, big Papa Jimmy. I mean, you got BPJ and you got Rohrabacher. Honestly, this team on paper, the problem with this team is, again, Ignatowicz has not had a lot of success in MLP. Mm -hmm. He's coming back from injury. He just freaking got ousted in the quarters in men's and mixed. Mm -hmm. So who knows if he's back or not back. But if he can play like he has been. Wasn't even the quarters, round of 16. Oh, yeah, round of yeah. yeah. If he can play like he has been previous to this last tournament, and they got Rohrabacher and Deckel and Elise. I mean, that's a really freaking good team. Okay. My question mark, once again, with almost all these teams, is this is going to be rally scoring. And a lot of these partners, Rachel Rohrabacher has had tremendous success with Anna Bright. Yeah. We've seen her play with other partners, and she hasn't had nearly the same amount of yeah. success. Well, again, yeah, Rachel's got to be the alpha. Yeah. And right? so are they going to be able to continue having that success? Yeah. I mean, Rachel. With new partners and in rally format. Yeah. I mean, Rachel has to be the alpha. Mm -hmm. On this team, she's got to put balls away. She's got to play the left, right? Where with Anna, it's kind of, they kind of rotate. They mm -hmm. kind of play the hot player. And so Rachel's got to be able to do that. And the other thing is, is James and Deckel, that's an interesting combination you would too. Think, you would think they would do well. You would. I mean, they're big. They have a lot of big serves. Yep. But again, I mean, and James can play the right. That's uh, the we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about this uh, more on uh, our next episode, but... James, he had that newsletter go out saying you need to be missing at least one serve and per game, right? <laughs> I saw him miss. He a missed few. three yeah. at the very end of game three in singles or game uh, two. Against all Sean. Against all Sean. Dude, and he a, was right there. We'll talk about this, but what a horrible weekend for James. Not only does he lose in the round of sixteen hey, I had twice. A pretty bad weekend too. No, I'm saying not only does <laughs> he lose, but then he loses to his arch nemesis, Christian Alshon. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's taking singles too no, serious that's true but still an l's an l yeah okay, okay. um on paper so what, what's your rating for that's them? a good DC. team i mean i think on paper i give it a b no b plus no come on no, no round no, up Ra round up no rachel has never proven that she can carry a team rachel's got it and neither is james james is bad in mlp he's got to be if he's if he's good if he's the james we see in ppas then they have a chance okay mad drops mad drops were absolutely crushing the draft they pulled the biggest surprise out of anyone. They went back to back picks, yeah, back which to back. stunned everybody. Yeah, that was the, the talk of the draft. And I know that your your boy Jim Kloss, your godfather, mm -hmm. thinks it was bad for them to go Catherine and Thomas. They should have gone Thomas and Viv or uh -huh. whatever. But Viv and Catherine are similar players, but Catherine's a better version of Viv. Yeah. So that doesn't even make sense to me. So you go Catherine, you go Thomas, so you get. Again, you and get, both of those players were former mad drops. So yeah. they know the coaches, they know the ownership group. Yeah. And they won it. Not where they not only were they former mad drops, they were former champions, MLP champs. Do you have to rub it? Against Seattle. Do you have to against rub it Ben in? Johns and Tyler Loon. <laughs> and then you go and get freaking Jade at 26 is a great pick. Uh huh. Again, she she is lefty. Okay. Catherine can play the left. Right. Jade is, is again, very good defensively. She's a solid player. I mean, it's, it's huge. And, and then I got confused. Now I know that they were trying to get a couple, they had a couple options on the board. They were mm -hmm. making some bids, but they were out of money, but then they go and get Hunter Johnson. Mm -hmm. Hunter's good. He's fine. But I just felt like there were other players there mm -hmm. that probably would have fit a little better, but Thomas and Hunter have a relationship, right? Yep. New New Braunfels. Um, they kind of look similar. They do a little, a little bit. bit. But the thing with Hunter, it, it's weird to me because the worst team in MLP history was the Bouncers last year. Mm -hmm. And they had three of their four players drafted in the fourth pl in Premier. Mm -hmm. And the fourth player opted out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she might have been picked. Yeah. And so that's just a weird one for me because, I mean, looking at the guys that were, I mean, you had Augie went right before him. I know you didn't want to go. I know maybe a lot of teams don't want to go two lefties because then that pigeonholes you mm -hmm. into into your partnerships. 
right? Like if you would have gone Augie, then you would have had to go. Catherine would have would have had to play with Augie and Thomas with yeah with Jade instead of the other way around. Yeah. But I just felt like Hunter was a little bit of a reach. I think that you had a DJ Young still available. You had a an AJ Kohler. You had Eric Lang. Eric Lang would have been a really steady presence on that team. Okay. And so that's the only question mark I had. Um, I mean, Pablo was still there. Again, it's the two lefty thing, but Pablo was still there. Yeah. I think, I mean, Pablo and Catherine, Thomas and, J- and Jade, mm-hmm. would have been a good team. Yeah. So because of the Hunter pick and just because there's, you now I hope he proves me wrong. I'm going to give them a Do B- you hope that? A B plus. Okay. The other person that was there was Colin Johns. True. All right, uh, let's see, number nine, and I think we have two more teams or so. Um, all right, Orlando, squeeze. Yeah, so the squeeze. So they went with Federico Staxrud. Yeah. I don't um, <laughs> yeah. I don't love this team, <laughs> I'll be honest. Fed's great. Fed, Fed has had a really good year. I feel like all of these players are really good, but... Putting together, them together, yeah. we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it, and it's going to be really interesting. I mean, Fed's great, right? Like, mm-hmm. and so <laughs> he's had a good year. But then you have Fed, and then you have Viv, and Viv's, I, I mean, she hasn't had a ton of success unless it's with Thomas. She had a chance to play with Riley mm-hmm. at finals, and she had to play with Anna Bright. She hasn't had major success. I mean, Viv's good, but I think she's better when she's with <laughs> Thomas. I don't know. And Viv in Paris does not scare me at all. Mm-hmm. You know, they took Paris at 25. I mean, that doesn't scare me. You had Leia on the board at 25. You had Jade Kawamoto on the board at 25. You had, ja- uh, who else? You had Tina Pisnik. You had Jesse. You had, I mean, there's just felt like. Who does Jay play with? Do you think he plays and then with Jay, Paris? Yeah, and then or Jay or Villiers. I think Jay at 32 is okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the other thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Dude, I honestly don't know. I mean, Jay played with Ignatowicz last year, and they did not do well. Mm-hmm. And now he's playing with – this team is just weird to me. I don't – I think it's four good players that don't mix. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm guessing that we're going to see Paris and Jay. It makes sense, right? The Frenchman with Paris. See what I did there? I did. And then Fed and Viv. But I don't – I honestly don't know. Tyler, I don't know. I don't think this team – Okay, what's your, rate, what's your rating for them? Fits together. Um, I'm going to give that team a C plus C plus. Okay. And who else do we have left? Do we have, is it just, uh, Utah? Is that it? No, I think there's one more. We have Dallas. Okay. Dallas, T- Dallas, Dallas hit a home run. Dallas goes and gets J dub at 12. I thought J dub would have gone three. I really think that these owners didn't look at their updated draft list. Obviously, they did. Before it started. I don't know. Some of them are. Did you not see the video that the fives posted? They were all in the the oh, apartment, yes. yeah. on the computer. Yeah, of course. And they filmed that after the draft <laughs> because no way Gary Vee gives zero shits about this draft and actually helped draft the team. Hey, he just wants Annalie and he got her. He didn't want Annalie. Ryan did. And Ryan was like, hey, come in here really quick. Let me film this video. <laughs> it's not actually during the draft, but let's pretend okay dallas so they got jw first uh he went all the way at number 12 that's what i'm saying that's yeah. why that's a steal in okay. my opinion and then you go and get georgia so okay. again they are used oh to- by the way jw the the johnson five they signed a deal they yes came that's to an agreement. they signed yeah. and they got added to the draft board the, at like three o'clock the day of right yeah the day of the yep. day of which i predicted would happen i felt like there's yeah. no way that they're not going to be playing yeah. nlp yeah for sure um and then yeah, so then you go and get Georgia, which is a great pick because obviously they play together. Mm-hmm. They know each other. I don't think Georgia's a great pick at 17 by herself, but she's a great pick with J-Dub at 17. <sighs> um, and they follow that up with Tyra. I mean, Tyra's playing really well. Again, there's other players that you could have taken there, mm-hmm. but they had a game plan, and it was clear that they were going to go Tyra and Augie mm-hmm. because Tyra and Augie caught that lightning I in a bottle. I think that's so interesting because it's one tournament. Yeah, it is. One tournament. Augie didn't even get out of qualifiers, dude. I know. And mixed in this one last tournament. One tournament, they're banking. And I see a lot of partnerships do that. Is they, they have one successful tournament. Oh, recency bias is a big deal. Yeah. I don't think I like that. Um, I mean, if they're able to prove that, great. But going yeah. off of one tournament, I don't... It, it is interesting, right? Like, he yeah. didn't... And, and obviously, partners matter. You were the first one to say that. Mm-hmm. But he didn't get out of qualifiers and mixed in North Carolina. 
I feel like if you are a premier level player, you should mm-hmm. be able to get out of qualifiers with anybody that mm-hmm. is willing to play pro. Mm-hmm. But he, him and Xiaomei did beat Matt and James. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I like that team. I think that, you know, again, J-Dub can play the left. Augie's a lefty, right? You have yeah. Georgia and Tyra. Augie and Tyra will play together. Georgia and Tyra should do good. I think, honestly, on paper, that's got to be tied for your top team. I'd give that team an A-. minus. Really? Yeah. Jeez. I would honestly – I wouldn't go that high. Where do you put them? I would put them B minus. B minus. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. I don't. I mean, Just I because. See. And this is. I was talking to other players once again, um, and they were saying that JW and Georgia they don't do well in MLP. They haven't had results. Georgia and Redmeyer played well, dude. Their, Their team, team wasn't good, but Georgia and Redmeyer had good results. And if you can win with Redmeyer, <laughs> he didn't get drafted in Premier. He's not even Premier level player. <laughs> uh, so Georgia carried Travis to wins. He did beat me. In mixed doubles. He did, because he had Etta. <laughs> they, they were actually playing well, and they beat Connor, Garnett, and Jesse, and they're playing oh, today. Oh, he's playing so, great. Yeah. I, we, we're going to talk about him in a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, so you give them a... I give them an A-, dude. I think them in Texas. You can't give them an A-. minus. Really? No. I like that team. Okay. Uh, all right, last team. <laughs> Yours truly. Okay. Diamond up, baby. So the one team that didn't spend above the 500... <laughs> Right? First pick is Tyson at 19. That's CEO, commissioner, Connor Ty- Pardo. Okay, let me just be clear. Tyson at 19 is not a bad pick. At 19, that's not a bad pick. Okay? <laughs> Do I need to leave this room no, for this? No. Should I just leave this room and let you Callie talk? at 27 is a good pick. Okay. Right? You at 36 is not a bad pick. Okay. You and Tyson together is a disaster. <laughs> Now, listen, let's talk about this just for a second. Give the background. Okay, so obviously we made some comments. There's a picture out there of Tyson. Essentially, he's at the airport. His wife's carrying this big bag. Tyson's in front of her with his hands in his pocket. And we were joking that he was making her carry this huge bag. Let me, let me clarify. You brought this up. You, you were joking. Yeah, but you're, I didn't even see the picture. You're still complicit. Yeah. So we were joking <laughs> that Tyson... <laughs> That she, he was making her carry this back. Somehow that led to this massive feud. We've gone back and forth. He went at us. He went. At, he actually had texted us and said he really liked the show. And then he told somebody that he wanted to choke me out. Like it, it just got crazy. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not there, looking. And up then at all. it all came to a head in Kansas City last year when he started flipping you off. Cincinnati. Scre- Cincinnati. Excuse me. Flipping you off. Screaming obscenity, <clears throat> obscenities at you. All these things. Right. Well, since then we've kind of just said whatever. It's been funny. But we just kind of let it go, right? I've seen Tyson at events, right? He walked. We were shoulder to shoulder in Dallas, looked right at me, told me, F you, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? (laughs) Um, But everything is, it is what it is. Like, it's been months. We don't care. Mm -hmm. I give, he blocked us on all social media. He blocked both of us. Both of us. I give zero shits about Tyson McGuffin and his life, okay? Let me just be very clear. I had never said a comment about Meg. I don't care about Meg. I'm sure Meg is a very nice person, okay? I don't care. But this dude is hanging on to this for dear life. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. He's the most sensitive human being I've ever met. Mm -hmm. He is being a baby, and he is refusing to play with you. Mm -hmm. He literally is demanding a trade, Mm -hmm. and he's refusing to play with you. Mm -hmm. He can't. You sent him a text. I did. And it was very nice. I saw it. And you said, hey, I'm willing to play. Let's bury the hatchet. Mm -hmm. We play well together. Let's move forward. I think that's a insane that you're willing to do that. Mm-hmm. And did he respond? Not yet. Not yet. It's been four days. How long does it take? How many texts does the guy get? Yeah. Okay. So he didn't respond. I, I probably should go through Meg, apparently. Yeah. And he's <laughs> essentially demanding a trade. Now, rumors are he's only demanding a trade to three teams, Orlando, DC, and New York. So the three teams with the most money. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know who he thinks he is. Like, dude, you went 19th for a reason, Mm -hmm. okay? You weren't a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. You can't carry a team. You've been a – he was a bad MLP teammate last year. He literally showed up to, like, one team dinner. I We were at the same restaurant as the – as Miami last year. And I'm like, where's Tyson? Because everyone was joking, like, oh, Tyson's going to be – are you worried? And I was like, no, where is he? And they're like, oh, he was too tired. (laughs) It was like 4.30 in the afternoon. So he doesn't show up to team dinners. He never showed up to practices. Like, the dude's not a great teammate, and, and that's fine. Like, 
It's oh, Tyler has left the building. And that's okay. I'm going to keep going. I'm not done. This is a dude that clearly didn't grow up playing team sports. And he needs to be taught that when you're a team, things like this happen. You have to swallow your pride and you're going to have teammates you don't get along with. And what you do is you make sacrifices for the greater good of the team. He was a wrestler. He was a tennis player. So clearly he's not a teammate and he doesn't understand team sports. He needs to suck it up. He needs to swallow his pride. I actually think that this team with Tyler, with Callie, with Tyson, and with Alex Strong could be decent. I think they could finish somewhere in the middle of the pack. But right now, as of the recording of this, Tyson is refusing to play. And he wants to be traded or he wants Tyler to be traded. And it's wild to me. Like, bro, who do you think you are? You're playing pickleball. It's pickleball. Knock it off. Swallow your pride. Tyler's willing to play with you. He's not being a freaking baby. Okay, this isn't hard. This this is really easy. You're being a diva. Stop. Okay, Tyler, you can come back now. You done? I'm done. I give that team, right now, I give that team a D. <laughs> until we find out if Tyson's going to play or not. Also, what are the trade value? There's no trade value there. Who are you going to trade him for? You got to trade him for literally like a pick in the 30s. Yeah. There's so, no nobody like he doesn't fit on any team and he's had these problems with multiple partners. You're like, okay, can he go play with Riley? Well, him and Riley had a falling out. Okay, can he go play with Deckel? Well, rumors are he's actually not playing with Deckel anymore, <laughs> or at least him and Jaume are gonna play something together. Mm. Right? So if they already had a falling out, okay, can he go play with the hustlers? Okay, well, he has beef with Leia. Okay, can he go play with I mean, name any team and there's some sort of Oh, can you go play with the Mad Drops? Mm -hmm. No, because him and Catherine have have issues and don't want to play together. Like, it's wild. Like, dude, it, what's I don't even know what the saying is, but it's like if you run into one asshole, mm -hmm. then okay. But if you run into multiple assholes, you're probably the asshole. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, so I'd yeah, be, just going. Just I mean, I don't know exactly what you said, uh, but I actually think the the craziest thing is that we would probably do decent. We played together in the past said, and we got fine. to the finals. We've beaten some good teams. I think we took fourth at the U S open or something like that. I mean, we play well together. He loves the left side. Yeah. I like the right side. Well, you have to play the right. Exactly. You're stuck. Yeah. And then he could play with so. Callie. You could play with Alex. Actually, you'd have to switch that. Yeah. Because Alex but, is a right side player. I don't know if you said this or not, but he, yeah. Yeah. So what what uh, grade did you give us? I gave you guys a D until as this, it stands. As, as it, it stands, stands until this gets resolved, and then we're going up to A plus, and then baby. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see how it how it shakes but out. I have, with all my um, good heart and personality and all my great qualities in me, I have extended the olive leaf. You have. I branch. have. Isn't a branch? And I'm more Is than it a happy leaf or a branch. Branch, I think. Yeah, okay. Um. And I'm more than happy to work things out. More than happy. Yeah. So, and you could be on Meet the MacGuffins. Somebody said, I'm like Elise. Me and Elise just forgive. Yeah. Just move. It's, again, it, I said this, you weren't in here, but he hasn't played team sports. He wrestled and he played tennis. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand the team aspect. Like you're a teammate, you swallow your pride and you do yeah. what's for the best of the team. Yeah. Anyways. So that's how I think. I thought that the premier draft was solid. There's a few snubs, honestly. Obviously, there's always going to be snubs. Yeah. I think DJ. I think Rafa. I think um, I think Eva. There's a chance that Eva could have gone. Yeah. Um, Rettmeyer. You know. So real quick, Rettmeyer went on his podcast. I haven't watched it, mm -hmm. but we had a few people tell us about it, mm -hmm. and he called. He he started like going off. So let me just clarify a couple of things really quick. Travis, first of all, put a shirt on. <laughs> Graham, I don't even know what to say about you, but <laughs> let me just be clear, okay? They're building a facility. I hope their facility does well. I hope it kills it. In jest, I said you are going to bankrupt your friends, and I meant it because they weren't going through the pickler because you asked if they were using the pickler. It was more like a joke, like a plug for the pickler, but again, you guys are sensitive. You get your feelings hurt, okay? <laughs> like, stop. It's not that serious, None of it is ever that serious, okay? I said it in jest. It was a joke. I hope your facility kills it. Good luck. If I'm ever in Florida. Are you, are you investing in if it? If I'm ever looking for meth in Florida, I'll come find it, okay? But in the end, I mean, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Now, Travis should have gone premier, in my opinion. I think Travis is a premier level player. 
Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that, but I think it's so interesting the dynamics of because he's an owner yeah. of, a, also, of a team. Also, really quick, if you're going to come at us, calling us the queens of the court is like the dumbest burn ever. Be be better. Like come at us with something harder and better <laughs> than that. Queens of the court is the stupidest thing. Talking about my weight and queens of court are literally the most low hanging fruit. <laughs> be better than that. That stuff's not fun. like I want you to come hard, but that's not funny. That's what she said. I'm just saying, it's just not funny stuff. Like, yeah. be funny. I don't, um, I don't talk about Graham's Jack teeth. Like, I don't. That stuff's <laughs> easy. Okay. Uh, my biggest thing, and I've thought this from the very beginning, is I feel like it's a conflict of interest. He owns a team. How can any player in any sport, if, imagine if LeBron had partial ownership in something. So, so I talked to a couple GMs after Travis didn't go premier uh -huh. and owners. And we all kind of were came to like the same agreement that he should not be allowed. He should be allowed to play, but he should not be allowed to play in the same level as the smash. So if he didn't get drafted premier and the smash is in challenger, yeah. we felt like then Travis is out mm -hmm. that he can't play uh -huh. challenger. Now yeah. it ended up working out. We'll talk about challenger briefly. Yeah. It ended up working out that the smash drafted him. Mm -hmm. But the question is, is, did any of the three teams or four teams above the smash want Travis? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that one did mm -hmm. and they weren't sure if they should take him or not or how that would work. Yeah. And they ended up passing and he falls to the smash. So what options does he have? He could a sell his ownership. Yeah. Or I B think he, just I not think, play. I think that's a possibility. Uh -huh. um, or B not play or, or I mean, or he can play if he's in premiere, mm -hmm. he didn't make premiere. He, sh he has to opt out. Mm -hmm. But again, it worked out. He's playing on the smash. But yeah, I think it is definitely a conflict of interest. Again, there's not like there's actually a very, very strict rule in other sports that you cannot have ownership in a team while yeah, you're still playing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, it makes sense. Yeah. So Challenger, let's talk Challenger just really quick. Okay, we'll, real quick. We'll talk Challenger. I don't want to. Oh, yes. We're going to take a break. Oh, Vulcan V Pro yes. Flight, the Vulcan. official ball of the PPA the Tour. And they also sponsor this podcast, KOTC. Yes. The V Pro Flight. Go check them out at VulcanSportingGoods.com and use code KOTC. Or you can go check them out at PickleballCentral.com and use code KOTC to or yeah, use code KOTC, KOTC to save as well. Yes. Um, any any thoughts with the ball, Jimmy? No, I love the Vulcan ball. I mean, I think that they are there's a new and improved version coming out. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I don't know. Maybe people are getting used to it, but I feel like we're seeing less of these issues and less of these comments about it. Yeah. At tournaments, we're not seeing the ball like. I mean, I watched you play with Julian and and against Ivan and Brandon French, and I'm pretty sure you use the same ball the whole time. Yeah, I mean, they give us new balls in between games. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. not like, and I didn't see anybody. Come, so I don't know. Yeah, Maybe either it's getting better, or people are getting used to it. But check it out if you want to play. A with lot the of people ball. say, "Oh, why don't you get this other ball?" Because it's very similar to the Vulcan V Pro Flight. The thing I'll say is, there's a lot of other similar balls out there, maybe. But if you're wanting to use the exact same ball that the PPA Tour is using. In the yeah. tournaments, you've got to use this one. Yeah, so. and if you're a ball snob and you feel like the ball, you have to get used to a specific ball. Yeah. I know for me, if I was playing a tournament that's using a, you want to use the using exact that ball. Same ball I will go using. get that ball and yeah. practice with it leading up to that tournament. Okay. All right. All right. Real so, quick, give us a breakdown of Challenger. We can talk about it a little bit more in depth, maybe on another episode. But yeah, just give I mean, us I don't want to grade Challenger because obviously I'm a GM. Um, I don't want to grade Jim Kloss. You got an A plus though. Jim Kloss is a clown. And if he did get paid for helping, he should give all of that money back. But with that being said, Challenger was interesting. So the first <laughs> round of Challenger. Real quick, they eliminated two eliminated teams. Eliminated two teams. So there are only 10. Yep. So there are only 10 teams. And I promise you, those first eight picks were two minutes. Mm -hmm. Gone. Just flying. So everybody knew exactly everybody what they Everybody knew wanted. exactly yep. what they wanted, who they wanted. And then we ended up getting to us. We were pick 10. Mm -hmm. And we slowed it down on purpose. Mm -hmm. We slowed it down because we were like, we don't need to rush. Let's take you get three minutes between picks. And you were at the pickler and yeah. at the headquarters in a war room, and you had yeah. all the TVs. Yeah, we had like a war that. room. We had, yeah. And so our, I mean, we had two targets. We had, we kind of had a strategy. We had a few different targets. Um, but first of all, Eva goes one, mm -hmm. and Eva very easily could have gone premiere. I think. I mm -hmm. think she could have been one of those last girls picked mm -hmm. in premiere. 
Um, and then it, it got interesting because right after Eva was Jack Monroe, who again, a lot of people had going premiere, mm -hmm. right? And then, and then it was Glosman, who Bay Area traded up to take Glosman. Mm -hmm. Obviously, her and Jeff Wynn have a very... Has she played a tournament this year? I've not seen her play a tournament this year. So That's insane to me for yes. someone that has not played a tournament but to go number two. She, three. Three. But she has that very close relationship with Jeff Wynn. And so obviously he's... I mean, I think she lives there. Yeah. So obviously he's seen her playing and feels like she's good. So they traded up. They traded up from... Nine to three to get her. Mm -hmm. uh, four is Jaume. Again, another player who could have easily been in Premier. And then five was Travis. Travis fell to his own team. Mm -hmm. He fell to which Florida. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. What if they would have passed on him? Well, that's what a lot of people are saying is he should have drafted himself in the last round. And that's what you initially, that's what started this whole beat yeah. with him. And I mean, I think we're somewhat fine now, but yeah. you said he should have drafted himself in the fourth round because yeah. nobody's going to take him because he's the yeah. owner. I would have taken him at 10 <laughs> if he was still there <laughs> just to take him. Um, and then number six was Lena, who okay. your previous partner. I'm playing with her next week. Yeah. So Lena is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, she's very, very solid. Seven was Irina. Mm -hmm. Went to the hard eights. Hard eights. Um, eight, Chow Yi. Chow Yi Wang went eight. This was the Jim Kloss pick. Okay. She went eight. We saw her at the Combine. She's played with Chuck Taylor a little bit. Mm -hmm. Number nine was Millie. So Millie had just got added back in, and Miami takes her at nine. And then at 10, I mean, I'll be really honest with you, our number one target the whole time was Rafa, mm -hmm. and we ended up getting Rafa at 10. I'll say we had a 1A and a 1B. Mm-hmm. And we didn't think we were going to get either, mm -hmm. but we thought there we thought we could maybe get lucky and one of them would fall to us. I talked to Rafa briefly, and he has a chip on his shoulder that he was not uh, selected yeah. in Premier. Yeah, I mean he was a third round Premier pick last year. Yeah, so we take Rafa at ten, and then our one B was actually DJ. Mm -hmm. So we're like, look, Rafa might not be there. DJ, we don't we didn't know if either one would be there. DJ mm -hmm. was the number one pick in Challenger last year. Mm -hmm. So we end up getting Rafa and DJ back to back. Mm -hmm. Like, could not be more excited to get those two dudes back to back who we feel like are our premier level players. Yeah. So, and then it was kind of interesting. So then there was kind of this run on women, Judith, Rihanna, um, who was after that? Oh, and then, and then Eric Lang goes, mm -hmm. Eric Lang is another solid player. You know, again, we really liked Eric Lang as well. Yeah. I mean, Eric Lang's a good, he won the men. We're very solid. Yeah. Good challenger. Yeah. The men All were the deep. way through. They were pretty solid. Yeah. Um, after after laying, it's, I mean, obviously people can look at this, but Daniel De La Rosa, Jeannie Arakina, Allison Harris, Tammy Emmerich, you know, Colin Schick, those are all the second round picks. Those are all good players. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the third round, and this is where it got really interesting because Todd Folk goes third round. He was an MVP of the last, you know, of the last challenger. challenger. Yeah. Um, Rachel Recker. Martin Emmerich. We took Amanda Hendry in the third round. Kelsey Grambeau. Pat Smith, again, another great player who has kind of fallen a little bit, but he's had good results this year with Jay. But he's mm -hmm. going to play with Travis. That's a good men's team. Yeah. Pat and Travis should do well. Stefan Auvernay. Mo Alhuni, big, huge lefty from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Roscoe Bellamy, another big, big he's player. He's the brothers, right? Mo, Mo and Moda, yep. Isn't there one more? I thought there was three. There might be one more. I don't. I Have don't. you seen all of them? So Mo I've seen is tall. Mo's the tall lefty, yeah. And then we played against Mo, Moda, 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 and he's not nearly as yeah, tall. Yeah, he's smaller. He's How the is one that, that possible? I don't know. Maybe they're not brothers. Maybe they're cousins. <laughs> okay. I don't know, honestly. Um, and then Christine Maddox, one of your former partners, yep. she goes to SoCal. Okay. So SoCal goes Irina Lang Maddox. That's a tall team. Talk mm -hmm. about height. Yeah. And then fourth round, Angie Walker. Shout out sack athlete, your former college roommate, PK. Yes. And then a really big surprise, Lane Sleeth. Nobody knows who Lane Sleeth is. Mm -hmm. Actually, I bet Heyshea knows who Lane Sleeth is because she knows who everybody is. Mm -hmm. We looked at Lane a lot. We actually did a lot of research on Lane. So she was the sing NCAA singles runner up for in tennis. Yeah. Just last year. Yeah. Um, her strokes look really good. She's one of those people that like she just started pickleball. Literally, I think she picked up a paddle less than 30 days ago. Mm -hmm. The breakers, Jeff Wynn or somebody got her paddles from Yola. Like she's very she's as raw as raw can be. But she played Mary in singles mm -hmm. yesterday or two days ago. 
and played her tough. But then she played doubles and lost 11-0, 11-0 to Annalie and yep. Catherine. Yeah. But she she's a, she's a Jeannie Bouchard. Mm-hmm. And obviously, as we've seen in this tournament, which we'll talk about in the next episode, is Jeannie's improvement is already there. Yep. And I think Lane is that type of player. And so, yeah, we liked her a lot. And Brooklyn ends up taking her, Samin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know for a fact that there's like three or four other teams that, that wanted her. And Samin was the one that actually finally pulled the trigger. And then Emily Ackerman mm-hmm. to the Bears. Another ML. We have three MLP champs on our team. Let's go. Um, Brendan Long, another solid player. Martina Frantova goes to Rhett Meyer's team, which on paper, Travis, Tammy Emmerich, Pat Smith, and Frantova is a really good team. Mm-hmm. Utah girl, Allie Phillips goes. Anderson Scarpa goes to Vegas. So Klaus must have been watching our team last year because mm-hmm. he goes against Scarpa. And then Eric Onsens. Do you know Eric Onsens? I know the name. I, I haven't seen so him, his, but I know the name. His dad's a senior pro. Yeah, Jamie. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he plays a lot with uh, Ronan Cameron, mm-hmm. young kid. He's like 22. You look at his results, and what's funny is his he has a win over Johnny Goldberg, and that's who picked him. Mm-hmm. So maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's another. That's a Johnny Goldberg. I mean, he was a roar. He was the he knew who Rohrabacher was before anybody knew who Rohrabacher was. Yeah. So Johnny Goldberg has you know I mean he's got Roscoe, Onsen's, Rihanna, Millie. You just he's just one of those guys that you he's like Belichick where you just trust that he knows what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. And then SoCal goes purple Jesus. Mm-hmm. So Eric Lang had sent out a tweet before the draft yeah. and he had texted all the GMs and he said, if you're going to draft me, I would like to have a say. Mm-hmm. And he was very adamant that he wanted to be paired with purple Jesus. Yeah. They played together. They beat the SQ and Tardio mm-hmm. and APP. Um, they both live in the Northwest. They can train together. Funny fact is uh, I was talking to one of the GMs and they were asking me about this purple Jesus and I heard that he was not going to be playing in all the MLPs. Yeah. And it turns out that he, I think he just t- told a couple of these specific GMs that he was not going to be able to play so that they wouldn't pick him. Yeah, so um, I talked to him on the phone mm-hmm. for a good 45 minutes. Purple Jesus? Purple Jesus. Yep. Insanely smart guy. Mm -hmm. He's got multiple graduate degrees. He said that he doesn't really take pickleball serious. It's always been something that he's just done for fun. And then he realized that he's actually pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. He told me he went to, he was in the Peace Corps, Mm -hmm. went to Indonesia, started playing badminton and became like national champion. Then when he was in college, he started playing ping pong and he won like the collegiate national championships. He's just a natural athlete. He was like a highly ranked point guard in high school Mm -hmm. and just one of those dudes that's kind of good at everything, but he told me he's very fanatical. And when he goes all in on something, mm-hmm. he goes like hardcore. He can't really help it. And so for him, he hasn't gone all in on pickleball yet mm-hmm. for a few different reasons, but he got into, he's trying to get his PhD mm-hmm. and he got into one of his schools. He didn't think he was going to get into, but after so many people had essentially reached out to him regarding playing MLP, he was like, you know, I think that I need to put school on hold and I need to go hard yeah. and see where I can take this. I heard, I, I don't know for sure, but I heard he was a very good junior tennis player and also I think in college he was good as well. I think yeah. he played for Washington. Washington, yeah. yeah. Yep. I think that's where the purple yeah. purple Jesus comes yeah. from. But yeah, the dude is just an insane athlete. He's not the biggest guy. He told me that all of his, um, all the things that he struggled with in, pickle, in tennis because he didn't have a lot of length. He's uh-huh. only 5'8". He said that all goes away in pickleball. Mm-hmm. And like it's like all of his strengths. So it'll be interesting. So he's with Lang, who he knows well. They play together. So yeah, that's a, I mean, that's again, it's a it's a little bit of a it's a again, it's a Rohrabacher pick, right? Yeah. You don't know. So Challenger was good. The only problem with Challenger is we really went from 72 to 40 players in less than a week. Yeah. And there's a lot of players left out. A lot. A lot. And it and it's kind of heartbreaking. Like real he, quick. Thoughts on AJ? He didn't get picked up in... AJ didn't get picked. I did talk to AJ, though, and he has a torn hammy. Mm-hmm. And so I think that he had told teams that, and that may have been part of the reason. Uh-huh. I think he will get picked up on waiver wires as soon as that happens. Yeah. Shelby Bates didn't get picked. I mean, she obviously was, you know, a solid challenger player. Some of our Utah last friends year. did not yeah, get picked. So, yeah, yeah, some of the Utah girls didn't get picked. I mean, Allie Phillips did. Mm-hmm. 
So that's good. Um, there was, I mean, there's a lot. Like, yeah. there's a lot of good players. Some there's, people were talking about Yates Johnson. Yates Johnson didn't get picked, dude. Yeah. There, the number of good guys, like you could probably take all twenty or all twenty guys off the, or I guess wait, how many? Ten teams. Twenty. Yeah. Twenty guys off Challenger mm -hmm. and pick the next twenty mm -hmm. and have good teams still. Yeah. That's how many good guys were in this draft and how deep it is. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's tough. Hopefully they can add back those two teams, maybe do some sort of expansion draft next year. Um, but I'm excited. I, I'm really – I won't give you all the ins and outs. I'll give you a little bit. Amanda Hendry came to our combine, mm -hmm. and we fell in love with her. Like, she was dominant. We have the numbers to back it up. She played 20 games, mm -hmm. and the only – like, she finished right at the top of the list against – Glosman against Tyra against Alex Strong. Yeah. Real quick, somebody in our Discord asked, "What is the difference between a Premier level player and a Challenger level player?" For example, somebody like CJ, and I think you answered it in the Discord. But what was that? That I think the biggest thing is consistency, mm -hmm. and I think that the higher level players are consistent longer. Mm -hmm. The Premier level players, CJ Klinger can be really good for three or four points, and he can look like he can hang with anybody. Can CJ Klinger be really good against premier level players for an mm -hmm. entire match? Yeah. Right? Or not even just an entire match, because they've all been able to do it for an entire match, for an entire tournament. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest difference, right? You see these guys, just for example, Sarah Ansbury and Audrey, Aubrey, Audrey Bonata. Ben, yeah, Bonanda. Bonanda. Bonanda yeah. They just beat Anna Bright and Rachel Rohrbacher. Yeah. Right? That's a great win, a huge win. Can they follow that up yeah. with a win today over Lacey Schneeman and Vivian David, yep. who aren't as good of a team? Mm -hmm. Right? That's I think that that's the difference. Jaume and Augie beat James Ignatowicz and Matt Wright. Can they follow that up? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that the top level players can. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference for me between Premier and Challenger mm -hmm. is the consistency over a longer period of time. Okay. Anything else with the MLP? This one was pretty much exclusive to MLP Yeah, no, stuff. we're pumped up. I think MLP is exciting. First event is in Atlanta. Have they announced, is everybody going to be there or just no. select teams? Um, everybody except for four teams. Okay. We will not be there. Black Bears won't be in Atlanta. Our first event is D.C. Okay. in June. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, so they actually haven't released the team-by-team team schedule yet, so mm -hmm. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that, but... It's okay. I think everybody knows that. Yeah. Okay. Um, big shout out to our sponsors. If you guys are a fan of the show, please do us a big favor. Go check out those sponsors and also hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps the show out, pushes it to a new audience. Um, big thanks to the Pickler, Pickleball Central, yep. C&D Pickleball Nets, yep. and Vulcan. Vulcan. And we also love Reset yeah. um, Paddle. Paddle it's, Reset. It's a spray. That you put on your paddle. Reset pickleball.shop. Use it. Keep that paddle fresh. And we will see you guys next time. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. Money.